um, the briefing of the Economic Development Committee. The first item we have is the Northern Regional Economic Development Strategy, and General Manager Michael Day is going to introduce this item, item to begin with. Thank you, Michael. Oh, thank you, Chair. So, yes, the uh, purpose of this item is for the Northland Inc. team to provide the Economic Development Committee with an update on progress being made with regards to the delivery of the Northland Regional Economic Development Strategy. And so, in the room this morning, Northland Inc., the Paul, uh, Jude, and Tanya as well. I'm not going to speak on this matter any longer. They have a PowerPoint presentation, which I'll come forward and speak to the team on, and there'll be an opportunity for the me to ask questions throughout the presentation and after the presentation. So, over to you guys. Thank you, Michael, and a uh, big welcome to um, Northland Inc. Thanks for coming to see us today and an update. Yeah. Chair? Michael. Um, so Paul Linton, I think you all know me. Um, I just before I kick off, I actually start. I feel we're starting to build up a momentum with IPRA uh, in terms of the things we're doing together. Um, good to see the mayor and, and deputy at the Ocean Flyer um, session the other day. Thank you. Just thank you for coming to that. It was great. Um, we're starting to have a conversation on some destination activities. Yep. Um, we've got some business case work that we. Uh, we're funding across in Dargaville in terms of residential development. Um, so um, we're starting, I think I think we're building up a really good momentum, a really good relationship. Um, so thank you for that. That's really helpful. Um, so in terms of this, uh, I thought I would just set the scene and then we're gonna hand over to Tanya and Jude. I just wanna introduce Tanya and Jude. Jude is part of my team and she's our head of um, a planning and engagement. Uh, so she's been um, coordinating this, this strategy for us. And Tanya McInnes, of course, is, is our writer, but you may know Tanya from her previous lives, where she was um, Deputy Mayor of the FNDC. And so has a great, great council background and understands engagement with the community. And we're lucky to have Tanya um, holding the pen for us. It's just a little bit of background for you. Um, so I just want to set the scene with this, this strategy. Um, it's, it's your strategy. That's the first thing. Um, all our, so a bit of background. Northern Inc. was asked to facilitate this. Um, said to Northern Inc., we need a new strategy for Northland. That's visionary, um, but also practical. And so we got asked to facilitate this. So I just want to be very clear, this is not an, a strategy of Northern Inc. It is not Northern Inc.'s strategy. It is your strategy, along with the other three councils and WDC and And it's our role um, to, to receive the input from you and the ideas and try and try and mold that into something that everybody um, would agree with in terms of the vision and the strategy and, and that's quite tricky and I'll tell you why that's tricky because um, at the one end of the spectrum we have we have engagement that says we want to be visionary and we want to be um, motivational and we don't want too much detail <laughs> let everybody do the detail and then at the other end we have we don't want any of that fluffy stuff. Just give us the 10 or 15 projects um, that we can focus on and build business cases on and that we can actually get going with for Northern. And, and Northern, and we're trying to navigate this um, from, and this is, this is a spread of councillors. Um, so just bear with us, because um, I think we are actually doing a reasonable job of trying to navigate that. And the structure we've put in place to, to try and um, bring all this together and, and uh, try and morph all this into one piece is, is in three pieces. Um, so one, um, it's a visionary, so we're looking at 100 years. This is what I call the fluffy stuff, because quite frankly, you don't know what's gonna happen in 100 years. But um, for those of you that have been involved in strategy, um, it's something called your North Star. Right? So where are you going? What is the type of community that you want? Um, what sort of culture do you want? What is the environment you want to have in the future? And so you, you can put some markers out there in terms of the type of population and, and culture and that you want, and we will do that. That's, that's the front of it. Then the middle of it is, is, the, is the content part of it, where we're actually looking to say, what do we need to have in place by 2040? And we chose 2040 as, as a centenary year, Treaty of Waitangi, but some of those things will be on 2040. 
we need to put a stake in the ground. And so we're saying, what are those things that need to be in place for Northland by 2040 to actually help us achieve this vision? And those are practical things. And then I said, I said, look, okay, well, look, there's all these plans out there and um, they're great plans. Um, it'd be nice if some of them were actually implemented because uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of good strategic plans out there, but let's not reinvent the wheel because a lot of those plans have had community engagement and community consultation already. So how do we do a lift and shift? And those are things like um, the tourism plans, the destination marketing plans, the regional workforce plans, um, TT NEEP, which you'll be aware of, the economic action plan. But then we said, how do we extrapolate that out? Because some of them are, are in the now. So can we extrapolate that out to 2040? And so that's what we've been doing in terms of that lift and shift. That's that middle part. So that gets what I call towards the crown. Mm -hmm. And then the last part really addresses the issue of people, of people that saying, can we just get on with something and stop talking? Um, and that's what I call the prospectus part of it. So what we're trying to do, and this is where we want your input, is go, okay, what are the things that actually have to happen um, to turn the dial now? And some of them we already know about that will come in there, and there'll be the four-lane highway. There'll be communications. There might be stuff around water. So that, that could turn into a list of maybe 10 or, or, or 15 key projects that all of Northland agrees with that might that absolutely need to happen. And some of those will be billion dollar projects. And then we have to sit down and go, okay, well, some are already in play. So if you're in the power space and you're North Power or your, your um, top energy, you've got your long-term capital plans and you know you're gonna do that. But we've, we do have an issue about the size of the pipe coming through Northland, right? So we know that might be a big project that government has to spend because that's, that's big bucks. Um, so that will be one of those things. So we'll have that prospectus. And then with that prospectus, we go, okay, these are the things we will agree on. How do we get it funded? And it won't just be government funding. it will be private sector funding in there. It could be housing. Um, and then we go ahead and actually make that happen or continue the impulse and make it happen. So that's the three parts of it. And hopefully that gives you a little bit of framework. So the purpose of this conversation is to continue the engagement to say, look, this is what we've heard from everybody. This is where we've landed. What do you think? What's missing? Um, here's a list of some of the things we think at the, at the prospectus end. From your perspective, what's missing or what's really important to you? And, and what I'd encourage you to think about as we go through this conversation that, that Jude and um, Tanya are going to leave for us, at the end of this conversation, I'm going to come back to you and say, what are the top three things you think should be in that prospectus part? They're going to make a difference to the Kaipo, you know, um, that actually have to happen by 2040, you know, and then we can ensure they go into a mix to be into that plan. And then that's the action part of it. So does that make sense? Does that set the scene very well? So, yeah. So I'm going to pass over to Jude. And Jude's going to um, just take you through some of the planning side of it and also just tell you a little bit of a steering group because we have an independent steering group that, again, you set up or your previous administration set up um, to guide this and then Tani's going to workshop for you. So, okay. Thanks very much. Thank you, uh, Jude. Thanks, Paul. If you wouldn't mind, Jude, if you, just before you... Sorry. Is there someone on the screen um, online? No. Um, just get a staff member on my staff member. Just before you start, just so that the um, committee can get to know you a little bit, would you be able to just do a little introduction of what your background is and, and um, just clarify what your role is and all that sort of thing? That'd be great. Thank you for your opportunity. Um, so I am seventh generation Kuipera. We farm in um, my family is the Andrew family uh, on my grandmother's side, so we farm in Tarara, Rariki and Kaipuru, and then my dad is a Thompson and that family from downtown Wainepa. So, um, and I was happened, although I've lived a lot of my life in, um, in Mongre and, and overseas, um, I was born in one of the, and like many in the room, probably born into Kaipuru Hospital. <laughs> so, um, so that's my Kaipuru connection, so I'm pretty passionate about things happening over here, um, although I don't live here anymore. So um, I have been in this profession called economic do development for about 20 years. Um, my Actually, I have to say my first profession was as a medical um, biochemist um, working in laboratories, but 
I decided I'd travel and never came back to it. So um, if I go back about 20 years, I worked for Enterprise Northland. It was, it was a precursor to this organisation. And I was um, the equivalent um, of a navigator within the, um, the council there. Um, and I guess hand-holding, probably more like what's being looked at now, a, a lot of hand-holding, um, trying to attract businesses and investment into the region. And um, then I actually went into council as a senior manager within council as chief operating officer there and um, was there probably about 10 years and then have gone to North Inc, the iteration now. I've um, been there about seven years and I look after what's called the action plan, economic action plan for the North, got about 80 projects in it. It was a, um, a, a product of the uh, national government in about 2015. Um, really good process, did a, a report around the challenges and opportunities, but from a sector-based view, right across Northland, and then out of that came an action plan. So at the time, the government said, could you do an economic development strategy? And those in leadership roles then said, it's not, we're not ready to do a strategy. We need to get on and do some stuff. So we're seven years on from that actual document now, and a lot of that has been implemented, certainly helped by the likes of Provincial Growth Fund last political, well, a couple of political terms ago. Um, so we are where we are now. My role now is threefold, actually. So I still look after the action plan. I'm helping lead out with the team this new strategy. And as Paul said, we're going to take a lot of, when we look at that strategy and we say, what's the best of it and the things that are really going to make a difference, we'll pull that through. And some of the stuff just won't come through. And it may just happen anyway in communities, cities, towns, or it may not happen at all. Um, or it may drop drop down uh, into or go back from the bottom up and go into the strategies that other councils are looking at doing, which is a lot more granular. So there's a bit of a process there just to work with each of the, the councils and other entities what stays, what goes and comes through. So that's um, hat with the action plan, carry that on for now as it transitions a hat, looking um, or working and um, supporting this project through. And just um, one other hat that I have worn is the Regional Workforce Plan, which you may or may not be familiar with. Um, government again said we want every region in New Zealand to have a plan about how they're going to sort out and build a workforce that meets the needs of the region and the industries that are there growing and what's to come. So um, I can send you the link for that particular document. I'm just a foot soldier in the engine room of these things. Um, there's a steering group that sits over it. So there's that document as well. We've also linked to that document, Destination Management Plan. You'll be well aware you've probably got 100 plus documents yourself within council that um, has been cognizant of. So that's me. Great, thanks. Going to sit here if that's all right, and hopefully I'll tap the right buttons and there's a slideshow. I'm a bit old school, so I did just print out a hard copy. And um, I'm only going to take a few minutes and then pass to Tanya. So um, you've got, if you want, you can look in your PowerPoint. That's what we're covering today. Um, in terms of, I just wanted to put this up and, and thank you, Council, for talking about time bound. So this is our timeline here. We're, we're working quite fast. We've had some engagement. We're coming back around to you. We're going to come back around again. Um, but we will be making, um, starting to draft the, the next version in a couple of weeks. Well, Tanya will, not me, reflecting the conversations that we hear. But we'll be done and dusted um, in August. Um, Paul's talked about that. I just wanted to acknowledge and clarify there's actually will be three parts. So the part which seems to have the most interest is the prospectus. So that is something where, as Paul talked about, that um, Northland together can go to um, government as a key investor. There'll be others and say, here's our key priorities. So when this new government forms, we want to be in a position as Northland to actually say to government, we've had a talk about this and you're going to spend some money. This is where we want you to spend it. So obviously when Paul says, this is your document. It's very critical for Kuiper to be putting forward what's priorities to you. Uh, the second part called the substance is the more detailed document. Um, and, 
and just details the what, the how, the who. And um, lastly, there's obviously a high level action plan because if we don't implement something here, then it's all been a waste of time, quite frankly. We need to do something. Um, I'm actually going to hand over to Tanya now. That's okay with Thank you. you here. Oh, apologies. So I just wanted to say in terms of the structure sitting over this particular plan, that there is a steering group of 12 people um, on that steering group with a range of um, skills that they bring. Um, from a Kuiper perspective, Catherine De Bruin sits on that um, on that steering group. I don't know if you're familiar with her. She's a accountant, I think, in Dargaville. And she's also on Hort NZ and very linked into the community. I guess particularly more on the west side, but she has been an incredible contribution um, and made it to all the meetings. So it's really, really good to have Catherine there. And just also want to acknowledge Michael because at an officer level, um, the, um, each council has put somebody forward from an officer level and they are meeting regularly to make sure that they are informing us of what is happening in your council and what priorities are coming through. So thank you, Michael. Thanks, Jude. Just, 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 just one, one comment um, to, to help our committee better understand how um, Northland Inc is structured. And you know, we've just had this call as a steering group and the various components. If, if we could have back to us just via an email via Michael, just a very concise summary of how Northland Inc works in relation to the council, the regional economic development committee, the board, yes. and now as we hear steering groups and who's in them and how many people are in them. That would be really helpful for us. Thank you. It's a busy picture, but we will. That'd be great. Thank sure, if you understand it, then we'll be able to understand it. Yeah. Thanks. Morning, morning. Good morning. Welcome, Tanya. Likewise, if you'd like to introduce yourself before you try quickly. I'm really delighted to be here. Thank you for taking the time to spend with us. Um, so, Tanya McKenna, so I was born in the Waikato, moved to Russell when I was four, and my dad had a retail business and then got into farming and all sorts of things. So, I grew up in the beautiful Bay of Islands and spent about 40 years in that space and have recently moved to Whangarei put my daughter down for schooling. So my background is around community development, um, lots of project management type work, tourism, sort of a big hands on the ground. I spent um, some time working for Yvonne Sharp actually as her PA uh, for a year. So that introduced me to the world of local government. And then um, for my sons a few years later, I ran for local government and I worked with John Carter as his deputy for six years. I actually ran for mayor couple of um, rounds ago and um, yeah, um, so doing a lot of contract work at the moment. I was also the chair of the conservation board for Northland for about four and a half years and did some work with them around strategy. So my background very much is in strategy, long term thinking and community development work. I see just as an aside that um, the recommendations have just come out for the review for local government and there's some really great stuff in there particularly around you know, re-empowering local government, because as you know, we get very little spend of the public dollar to, to be working with our communities. So my role here is I'm a contractor of a company called GBT Ventures. Um, I'm also the interim CEO for Economic Development New Zealand at the moment for about six months as they do a review. So very much working in the economic space. So my role really is I'm the listener and observer. So today, um, we're just going to share with you where we've got to. I know that you saw the straw man. We've now got a draft one, and it's really important that, that you understand where the information's come from. So we did a review of a lot of the strategy work that's been undertaken over the last 10 to 15 years in Northland. So that high level stuff that included your long term plan. And that's what sort of formed the basis of where we are now, along with some engagement with our private sector, of course, and some of our government agencies. Today is super important that you tell us, it's going to be no offence taken, I need to be really clear on that, that you tell us how you think we're going, what's missing, where the gaps are, and also what your priorities are. So as Paul's talked about, 
where we're heading to. Now, this is a one page. Oh, now I've just got to note that the one pager is really draft. So everything in the top here has yet to be written. So these are just um, some of the like the thoughts here around what we look at our values. Um, this is coming through some of the work that the steering group's done. So just it's just there in context, but it's these things down the bottom that I want to have a chat to you about today. Any questions before I jump into oh, it? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, cool. Just just a quick one. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Councillor Nay. Go ahead. Thank you, cool. Chair. Um, just, just. I mean, uh, there, there's a lot of uh, other words uh, where you. Is it fair and just charity principles and then fair and garbage? All those words you have chosen to justify that you are following the charity. Uh, no. Or is it something beyond that? It's a great question. So those words have actually come out of the other strategies we've read. So when we pulled all the strategies together. Um, it was what was the commonalities and interestingly I think we looked at about 15 strategies which included everything from the health board through to as I said the four LTPs and past strategies. They all are saying the same thing but there's not a lot of cohesiveness between them so part of this is around how do we get a little bit of cohesive approach forward but all those words councillor have come via via other strategies those are sort of the key themes but once again they're all up for they're all up for conversation. Now, I just want to note straight off, I know, understand your worship, you know, the thoughts around the carbon. So this is what's been identified so far. Um, and when we talk about missions, it's like those three high drivers that are going to move and then have other things um, come from them. So no one's arguing the connectivity. Obviously, our infrastructure is incredibly challenging. We were just discussing today that maybe one of the benchmarks is moving from, was it, five billion potholes down to two. But <laughs> so, <laughs> so really acknowledging connectivity and that you know we know that this opens up for economic development, opens up transport, being able to get logistics of food, etc. Um, another mission. Uh, is around our natural resources, how we use them in a sustainable way. And this includes land as much as it includes. And then the other conversation is around the carbon. So really keen to hear your thoughts on this. So Councillor uh, Howard, you had your hand up. I, I did question. Thank you, Mr Chair. It's taking notes and I'll... Tan, just yeah. going back yes. slightly. Um, yeah. As you know, we're, we're a relatively new Council, I'm just interested to understand whether you have had filtered into the discussions our new vision and and our key outcomes that we have here. I know it's it's across the whole area, yep. but yes. just want to understand that you yes. had those. So we looked at your LTP, and we also had some uh, recent focus. So yes, good. We, okay, but. Absolutely. If you don't feel, feel free to give it another plug. And it's always interesting, as Paul said, is taking you know the different regional as, uh, area aspects and bringing them into a regional context. But we're really much here to hear. So if you've got any thoughts on that, the questions around these ones, as I said, no offence taken. Um, do you, is that a mission or is it an enabler? And recognising the thoughts around the table on that space. Are there better missions? Are there better high level focuses that we should be looking at? And really keen to hear what an action might look like to achieve any of these or what you were doing on the Kaipara around the space. And I think the fact that we're in Mangfa is really interesting, one A, with where you've got this bang and you know, having to catch up with infrastructure, etc. Thanks, uh, Tanya. I mean, I'll just lead off with a comment if you're wanting some feedback. Um, my initial impression there is that mission one and mission three uh, potentially conflict with each other. Okay. One each. Uh, Can you? And, 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 and mission, mission two may also conflict with mission three if we're going to get into some heavy industrial mining. Um, we're not going to do it with battery powered um, equipment. So if you're talking about anthropogenic uh, carbon dioxide emissions in terms of your net zero carbon rohi slash region mission. Um, I'd have trouble understanding what what 
you're trying to achieve there other than to stop the use of petroleum fuels. So are you also indicating that you've got some projects in line that are looking like you mentioned mining then? Is there's... We don't have any projects in okay. mind, but if we're going to boost our connectivity, um, it, which, which means road building using bitumen, heavy diesel machinery, um, if we're going to utilise natural resources, which may be mining for aggregate or minerals, uh, I don't know how you can reconcile that with an intention to achieve a net zero carbon region or why you would want to achieve a net zero carbon region. So perhaps if you could elaborate on what the intention of Mission 3 is and what the reason is for it, then we might be able to understand it in relation to the other two. So this once again has come out of the other strategies that we've read. So we have just this isn't this isn't us saying what it should be. This is us collating information that's already out there and bringing it in. So this is why we're here asking the question. So as you know, there's two types of carbon measures. There's the one where um, where you are offsetting carbon. So thus we're seeing lots of pine trees being planted where the emissions are offset. And then there's the other conversation around reducing emissions. And then there's the conversation of actually is that a necessary thing in the first place? Yeah, well, I mean, I would come back to why we're here yep. and we're here for the benefit of our ratepayers yes. who are a subset of the ratepayers of Northland and probably have similar drivers to all of the ratepayers of Northland. And so what, it's all very well going, okay, we've gone and read strategies from other external organisations that I don't know who they are or what they are or what their background information is, but I don't know whether that really puts us in a position of having a sense checked and proof checked okay. document. It's what is the source of the motivations and drivers that those other strategy documents have? Oh. See where I'm coming from? Yeah, no, totally. No, this is why we're here. This is part this is why the engagement's really important. And if you are not comfortable, please tell us, because this is what we want to hear from you now. I mean you all know that Northern Regional Council, this is a really big there's a lot of work being done around this space in there, so. Well, we don't. I, I don't. I personally don't know that. Well, that, yeah. So, okay. So that is a conversation that's been had in that space. Um, once again, NRC works in this space. So, um, but if you've got other priorities, please tell us. Well, well I guess uh, Councillor Howard wants to ask a question as well, but we'll, we'll make it, uh, give some feedback. But I, I guess the point would be that. That's all fine and well, Some but we need to understand yep. why they would want to achieve that. And, and if they're relying on poli other external policy documents, and we don't know what they are, yep. we need to understand what the facts are that they've based those policy documents on, because we may find that you could unravel back to a point of uh, an illogical conclusion. Yep. So, thank you. Councillor Howard, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Tanya, my sense from this is that I, I can get mission one, mission two. Yep. Right? Because I think that they're big pictures and you know, particularly the connectivity is is so important and so much has been written even in the last two weeks. Yes. About, <laughs> about that. And you know, I think that, that is a is a real focus. It seems to me that mission three is actually a little capsule. It's, it, it doesn't, now, might just be interpretation, but it doesn't seem to me, it, it's an outcome, it's not. Okay. You're not the first to say that, actually. Right. Yeah. Not the, the bigger picture thing that these other elements are. And, I mean, it's interesting, even this morning, in the Herald or Stuff, there's been an article written where the government are actually looking at whether already they've gone too far with this whole the tree planting exercise to yes. reduce carbon emissions and things yeah. like that, that and the hard. balance of offsetting yeah. so you know there's a conflict you know coming from they who lead so yeah i i, I think that one what would you like to see in here what yeah. do you think is a better well, 
There you go. Well, well Councillor Manderson had his hand up Sorry. first, if you don't mind, Your Worship, so we'll let him speak first. Or unless you want to say what you want to see in there, if anything, Councillor Howard. I haven't gone that far yet. <laughs> I'm last. Oh, and by the way, sorry, I should have read So today we're obviously having your collective wisdom sharing with us, but there are other ways to feedback. You can feedback to Michael if you've got things you want to go further. And also within the condensed document, you'll see a link that will take you to an online form. So you can feedback that way as well. So today is not the... Right. Yep, that is cool. Okay. okay. Thanks, Councillor Manderson. Uh, thank you. Uh, I see an awful lot of weasel words, good intentions, um, attractive concepts, etc., and absolutely nothing at the end of it. Are we going to get into um, detail? For example, <laughs> um, achieving a, a net zero carbon. Y yeah, so if that's expensive, unbelievably expensive, that doesn't go. Utilising natural resources sustainably, I don't know where anywhere in the history of this country we have pursued sustainable resources. We've, used, we've pursued sensible use of them without unreasonably wasting them. So that says something, what you've got on the screen there, but it's nothing in practice. We're going to boost connectivity. I don't know what that means. I, I, I'm just confused with all of it. Uh, I, I think it's more a question of people being writing to expand the time available to write in. Uh, I'm not sure that it's putting the rubber on the road. Thank you. Thank you for that feedback. Thanks, Councillor Madison. Councillor Nayer. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I would not like to say, I, I wanted to say a lot, but I think. Uh, Mr. Madison has mentioned. Um, all I wanted to ask at this point is this, is it a directive from the central government to achieve the net zero carbon for the region? Um, no, we're not, we're not, this isn't being um, influenced by central government at this stage. This is then what important. is the influence? Why have you not? Well, this is what we've heard today. Yeah. This is what we're hearing through strategy and engagement okay. today. Thank you. As I said, this is <laughs> up for debate. That's good. No, excellent. Right. Councillor Manderson. Thank you. What I'm sensing is good ideas are being obfuscated by people's political agendas. Okay. I think we really got to get back to some basic concepts and how they're actually going to be implemented, not how we talked about. All right, I'm just going to write the basic concepts because I'm going to ask you on that. Mm. Did you want to carry on through your presentation? Um, just, just are you happy for people to? Oh, sorry, Your Worship, if I skipped you, my my deepest apologies and grovelling. There you go. Yeah. Grovel all you, grovel all you want. Um, yeah, like I've got. I'm really challenged by this net zero stuff. To be honest, I think from the reading I do and I do extensive reading anywhere on the planet where they've been driving this, they've got power prices that are 10 times what they should be, which drives your business out of your district. And we're a district that's supposed to be leading change. Why don't, why don't we get real about what's out there and what we can do? And net zero to me is a busted flush and we need to recognise that Northern Regional Council is using junk science at this point to drive some of their policies and they need to change that. Um, talking about RPC 8.5, um, the um, current um, policy that me was pushing down through from top down and um, already being declared by the IPCC that that's unrealistic. So with 85% of the planet being driven by fossil fuels, <coughs> um, being leaders in this is not going to make our district prosperous. We need to we need to get on with it and use our resources. Thank you. Sure. Uh, thank you for that. And I've noted leading change. I think. Sorry to be so adamant. But no. That's the way I feel. Honestly, I'm not. I'm like I said. I'm the. I'm not. Thank Paul once. I'm not politically, and I'm just here to present what we've collected. I'm just going to let uh, your illustrious leader step in. You just tribute. There you go, Paul. Can I? I can I contribute here? Um, can you say that? Yes. Yeah, sure. um, so this is fine. This is the process of this engagement. Give us feedback. 
Um, I'd have to disagree respectfully. Councillor Anderson, on your comments about obfuscation. I'm pleased about that. <laughs> that word, obfuscation. We're not deliberately trying to put stuff up here and confuse people. Um, we're, we're actually trying to facilitate you know, council from multiple councils and actually come to come to a come to a place that everybody agrees with. And it's actually it's really hard. It's really hard because you've got extreme views. So bear with us, and and um, we're going through the process. Trust the process, and we'll get to a good point eventually. What I did want to say about mission three is is you're not the first on mission three, and I suspect we might throw that out. And and one of the suggestions I've got is. And this might not be the one that goes in there, but what's not in there is people. Right? What's not in there is people. Um, and if I was writing strategy um, on my own, for example, and this is not my strategy, this is your strategy, I'd be putting something in there that's, that, that covers the education of my people and the employment of my people. Because uh, one, we've got those connectivity. So connectivity is digital, it's roads, it's all the stuff we know about. Mission two is about our primary resources and how do we use it properly because we need a base for economic growth. And the third part of that still really is that people can do that and where they live and what are they doing with their jobs. So that might change, for example, to be something around the people. Um, so if you've got any thoughts on that, uh, I just thought I would contribute here. Thank you for that and I appreciate that. I mean, I, I guess my initial reaction is, well, it is the people, but it's, it's from in the context of what we're talking about here, I thought we were talking about economic development and so but not attracting enterprise and enabling the development of enterprise. It's uh, our people. People mm. are enabled. Mm. Um, yeah, it's really interesting that because as we all know, you know, there are some social challenges and the recognition that if you're in a survival mindset, wondering how you're going to get through the day, it's really hard to contribute to your wider community, you know, in that space. And we're looking for, you know, um, workforce that turns up every day, we need them to not be in survival mode. So that's why you'll see a little bit of a holistic approach in here. Right. So. so sorry. Uh, Councillor Manderson just wanted to contribute again. Thank you. I'm a little bit concerned that you're getting to the stage where an awful lot of people already demoralised about the impositions that are uh, affecting what they do uh, and stopping it, that, that you'll have even more. It'll be a bit like it's, it is in China. People are starting to lie flat. Um, how you think you, people... Uh, an authority can make better decisions for people at the coalface beats me. Uh, it, it, it just doesn't accord with uh, the 70 years that I've had in Kuiper. Um it, it needs a total rethink and simplification if, if it's going to be sold. Mm. Like the word of thanks, thanks, Tanya. So, yeah, but the sense I'm getting in from what Paul has said is this is a starting point. You've drawn ideas from other strategies. You are trying to bring together diverse views across a, a range of different councils. And I guess probably from my perspective, what I see is um, some of these ideas, including the net carbon thing, and it's maybe that won't be one of the drivers here. Um, are things that we would need clarification on to understand where they're coming from. And I think that Northland Inc. can play a really good role in actually getting down to facts. So any of the things here that might appear a bit um, left of centre, um, if we can understand the factual basis of them rather than that they have a genesis in another document that somebody else created, then we'll be able to understand whether we do or don't want to support them amongst that diversity of view coming from the various councils. In fact, the other councils may find that Northland Inc. might be a sense checker that will find that they will change their position because you will give them good science and good data to show them that the position that they've initially taken is flawed in some way or not. Cool, thank you. All right, so growth sectors, so recognising these sectors have been, since some of these have come through the um, action plan, and some of these have been identified <laughs> in the natural food 
um, and medicinal is new, although we've been doing it for a long time. So these are the areas that have been identified as growth sectors for Northern. So the question here is quite simply, is there anything that we're missing that you think is a growth sector? And is there anything on there that you think needs to be taken off? Uh, Your Worship, um, yeah, tell you, um, does construction and infrastructure cover housing? Yes. Okay, because that's one of, um, Biggie. Another one of my little pet subjects is trying to get um, cost-effective housing in our district, cool. and and um, reduce the rules so people can have less. Um, Bless you. Be with um, <laughs> movable housing. Yeah. Um, package housing, and um, just to make it more enabling for people to be able to bring their housing and their ambitions into our district. Great. So, because this is an economic, so we do talk about housing and a bit of the detail to come, but absolutely it is. Yeah. Thank you. And Council thanks for that feedback. Councillor Manderson, then um, Councillor Lambeth, and then Councillor Howard. Thank you. Speaking again to this issue there of forestry, you have central government incentivising forestry, making decisions for people. Enter entering tax advantages that have prioritised the interest of those people, and what have you got in Northland now? What have you got if you look at ratepayers that are paying to subsidise the pine trees for which China has already uh, reduced its demand? I, I think that there is a mistake by most educated people and those people in authority to ever assume they can make better decisions than people that are <laughs> investing their own capital, uh, involving their own family and their own future. Um, I think it's a dangerous mistake. Sorry. It's a fundamental mistake. So you're when you, you, I think you need to take notice of, and you might facilitate it for people at the coalface. Don't do more than that. Unless you can do something for the community that the community desires and cannot do for itself, stay home. So, is your so as that as an example? Are you saying it's local decision making over central government decision making? Oh, it was central government made that decision. Yeah. It was people that were not at the coalface. They were they were people that is, if we look at the forestry. It swept through Norfolk. Mm -hmm. Okay, they would have been fools not to have done that. It was money that they would have spent to government in tax. The government keeps their votes. They invest it in pine trees, etc. It was all money that would have been lost to, to taxation. Um, and I, I, I'm concerned that. You're seeking to promote uh, the minorities with no skin in the game, no capital, into decisions that should be made at the coalface. Are you suggesting that forestry should be removed from this list? Just de dealing with forestry as an example. All right. Okay. It would go for all of them. Agritech, if we to look at it specifically, I don't know how many people that are making decisions on agriculture at the moment that have got any understanding of agricultural history. So I'm definitely hearing local decisions for local people. That's what you're promoting, isn't it? Yes. Great. Excellent. Skin in the game. The game. Thank you. Councillor Lambeth. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, just. I, I, I see the nice big framework up the front. I'm wondering if you, and, and I hope we can get to it. I realise you've got a bit of a hard time so far, but um, um, we, we need to get down to to core core issues. And there's probably about three core issues. Yep. And I'm not going to go on about the roading anymore, but that is causing a problem. Yeah. Um, no arguments there. Um, we, we are we're mass produced, and I'm talking mainly from the Dargaville area. It was, re, it was reinforced to me on Monday at a meeting that we had with some of the big players of Dargaville, housing. Yep. 
housing, housing, housing. Don't worry about anything else. They're employing people and they're not turning up to work three weeks later to start because they can't house. Okay. There's nothing else. Yeah. That, you know, we can talk about all these wishy-washy things and everything else and strategies. Yep. They need housing, followed by industrial growth, followed by commercial growth, and in that order. The jobs are there. Yeah. It's not about tourism because there's no point increasing tourism with certain people who aren't engaged in that within the Dargaville Township and area and others that are, and when they can't house the staff to accommodate that growth. Yeah. You don't go and advertise in your business for more work when you do not have the productivity behind it to cope with that work, and we don't have that. It's really, really simple. We can talk about all this other thing. The other thing is that um, in my previous occupation, I, we used to talk about how we used to stop the leaking bath overflowing. And we constantly came up with people who had more absorbent towels or they could use two towels and one. But the simple thing was pull out the plug and turn the tap off. You know, and talk about forestry, I'm not talking about a different thing. I'm talking about carbon credit farming. Yeah. It is a scourge on our district and it's rotting us from the inside. So we've got to stop the <coughs> destruction before we can look at growth. It's crazy. Stop at the, look at your retention of farming, the people in that district. Dargaville will die if we start losing more industry there, and that means if that meat work go, meat works goes, one of the largest employers, because there's not enough stock coming through, because we're now growing these trees. I don't know what they are. They're not yeah, really they're trees. Just, it's they're just, they're just scrub and bracken and horribleness and and everything else, and destroying the productivity of the area. So we've got to stop the the the, the rot first. And we've got to look at the basic issues. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Howard. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. And, and, and Tanya, I think that um, you get a sense that we're trying to deal with pragmatism yeah. rather than idealism. And, um, you know, we've seen what idealism can do without, you know, yeah. r real strong plans. Um, just on that, and without getting into small detail, but you, you may or may not be aware that um, uh, through through our mayor, we've, we've promoted, um, and, and I guess it would come under uh, high value manufacturing, we've promoted the idea of a, a significant waste to energy yes, I have. A concept. Now, is that where something like that we want to yes into, into yep. high value manufacturing? I mean, you know, potentially. I don't want to get into the details, but you know, again, it's adding value. It's adding tangible value. And that's that's a fantastic example of what we would like to capture in the plan. That waste to energy, you know, that's tangible action to make a difference. You know. Um, I'm just through, how much time have we got? Oh, we, we've, got we've got we've got plenty of time. Okay. Yep. Councillor Manderson's got his hand up, and then Councillor Naya. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just while we keep going, I'm just going to move into some projects so that you yes. can see. Come back to that one. Yep. Uh, thank you. Uh, Gordon Lambeth made a good point about housing. I think what you've got to do is get back to examine the overview. We have in New Zealand a housing market that's controlled by Fletchers. You've got the legislation controlled by Fletchers. You've got the supply of building products controlled by Fletchers. And all you're dealing with in this sort of thing are tweaks that propagate these things further. Um, I had a one-on-one -on -one with Hugh Fletcher 30 years ago, and basically, if Fletchers can't dominate it, they don't want to be involved. There is nothing that they are in unless they are in it on the process to domination. Uh, you've got to bring back that. There's a lot of people being isolated from the property game. It's been mined 
by a sector of the community. It screwed up the economy something terrible. I think you've got to get back to basic concepts, minimize, minimize them, and, and, and look to the significant changes that will alter the way people behave and, and encourage the decisions at the coalface, not um, appropriate another layer. Thank you. You're an awesome localism advocate. That's great. Councillor Nayar. Yeah, um, I won't go in the details of uh, possibles. Uh, I would really like to see some actions on the things you, which are actually possible. Yeah, yeah. Like you have the whole thing about road, rail, sea, air, digital, four laning. That's like the um, manifesto of any central government party, you know. Um, so in the seafront um, is one area, the roads, we haven't done anything. And I can assure you, nothing will happen for a very, very long time because we don't have the budget, or so the Prime Minister says. Um, but on the sea front and the air front, uh, you talked about ocean flyer, something coming there. So I would like to have something happening in Kaipara, Northern Waira River. And also on the sea front, um, there is a possibility of having a ferry uh, from Auckland to Porto. Okay. Yeah, so these are the two areas so that would can happen without any major infrastructure. Um, the possibility of having a warp, suitable warp, and all. What yeah. sort of theory are you talking? Are you talking? About? Well, I was speaking to someone who was going to buy a fire for a million dollar, whatever. So it, it will be transporting people and public. And right, so it will serve the purpose of a destination Kaipara as well. So those very load of people, just like going to Waiheke, yeah, you come in twenty minutes from Helen. And then they can go. But if the roads are not there, all these things are just mind boggling and not happening because you can't reach a place. How can you have anything? How can you have houses? So connectivity is absolutely, it's got I know, to be on the key thing, but there are lots of things. Rail. But I would say rather going down in the specifics and the minority of the details, you have to see the big picture, what is possible and what is not. Yeah. So if you focus on what is possible and then you expand that thing. Yeah, thank you. I just noted, so you've got the ferry, which would be people and freight. Yeah. Any other, so this is, once again, this is the list of, um, so these are bigger projects, not our little ones. Is there anything on here that you disagree with? Is there things on there that you think should be added? Thank you for the ferry. Thank you, just Sorry. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the resilience on on route on road. Yeah. And just just for absolute clarity. Yes. So all of Northland is saying that roading is our key conduit. No, but well, I'm not. What they're saying is this. So currently it is, and as you know, during Cyclone Gabriel, I think we got down to three days left of food because of the infrastructure. So that currently we rely on roading. So the conversation is, is just what's been brought up is what are our, so rail has obviously been in conversation for a while, and opportunities around sea. And so this is, you know, what do we else do we want to identify? Well, uh, I guess that, that's what I'm getting to because, you know, if I just start on roading, yep. you know, there is all sorts of negativity at central government and, you know, about roading. Carbon. What do you see as the solution? Oh, well, I think that, well, I, I would have thought that um, getting rid of central government posturing and actually doing something mm. specific yeah. and committing to the roading and maybe, and here's the biggest area of posturing, the rail. So you, it's, you know, it's just been a political football, a little bit of money being thrown around and promised, but actually, you know, they drop the the level of the tunnels, you know, between here and. So, if you could take the politics out, do you see rail as um, as a key opportunity? I, I well, you know, depending on what happens with with the port, I, you know, I, I think but that's all. But you see, the yeah. port is all key to. Regional 
yep. local accessibility in, in, in my mind. So the port for you is a definitely must stay. Okay, what else have we got? Uh, that, uh, sorry, that doesn't mean necessarily moving the whole whole of Auckland port. I mean, it, it, it's but it is about yeah utilisation. Okay, uh, Mayor Jepson and then Councillor Lambeth and then Councillor yeah. Manderson. Thank you. Just congratulate you for having most energy up there. Um, but Aha. I go down to, 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 to energy and green energy initiatives. I okay. I can't reinforce. Strongly enough, the, the north is going to progress economically. It needs cheap energy. Yep. And I don't believe rushing to windmills and solar panels and batteries currently a technology that we can rely on to give us that. Okay. And I think I would encourage North Bank as a leader in our district to lead economic development. That it would be prudent to ask our cow companies what the situation is with our current power supply, what it will be in the future, given what growth we might have, and particularly to talk to our constituents about baseload power and have we got enough if we do introduce all these energy systems that when the wind isn't blowing and the sun isn't shining, are uh, we still going to have viable power supplies? Because Internationally, they're in trouble everywhere they've gone down this road, and I don't want to see it happen in my district. Cool. So the good news is there's some really, really good conversations. North Power and Top Energy are already doing a huge amount of work in that space, and one of the projects which you'll see come up is ensuring that I don't – what's the proper word for it, Paul? The transition link? Transmission link between Green Bay and the north, because currently it's too small, So and it's a big – piece of infrastructure so we need central government. So you're on the money there. Um, there is, I won't go into it now, but there is a lot of work and there's a lot of planning and strategy being done by both those power companies, exactly that. And the opportunity for producing power up here is huge. It's really exciting. The right sort of power. And yeah, and you know, and then selling it to our neighbours, of course. Yep. Councillor Lambeth. There is work being done in that space and um, yeah. Councillor Lambeth. Um, and I'm talking about the Northern Wire area. Um, um, it, it, it has three times the GDP of the national average of the country because it grows stuff. And it grows a lot of stuff. And it keeps on growing it and growing it. Um, we all know about the Coomers. 95% of the Coomers are produced up there, so you're not going to get any Coomers this year because the Gabriel took out all the river. But there is a lot of stuff that is growing there. That's fine. Okay, so let's have a look at our rail. Crickets. Let's have a look at our seaport. Crickets. Any good for us, eh? um, you know, I'm just putting it bluntly. This, this is all pie in the sky stuff. This is where the food is growing. Half of the food is growing is in the Kuiper, and yet we haven't got a sustainable link to the rest of the country. Hello. Yeah. It's not hard. Yeah. What does a sustainable link look like? Well, the sustainable link is you campaigning with the National and the ACT Party to make sure that the four laning okay. becomes a, a government election issue. We've done it through the New Zealand property investors with they've guaranteed us that they're going to get rid of those tax law rules. And we've put them to the to the pump on it and they've publicly said that they're going to do it. We need that for laning. The local um, Māori leaders believe it is the only way forward. We've got a, I drove from Auckland yesterday afternoon and I drove over the new motorway. What an incredible piece of engineering. But then we come to the Dome Valley and come on. Yeah. Um, and then and then we come to the Breen Derwins. Come on. Yeah. You know, We've got to get it past the Breen Derwins, or at least to the Breen Derwin turn-off, for the Kuiper to survive, and then we can get those arterial roots in. Thank you. Yeah, it's, oh, I can, yeah. it's really basic stuff, eh? You've just got to stop all the wishy-washy, go back to the basics. Where are we making our money? Who are our top salesmen? We make sure those top salesmen get everything they need, because they're going to make the company go. Yeah. So, 
I can tell you that is absolutely, without a doubt, well and truly at the top of the agenda. It's um, WGC are having the same conversation, and it also came up in the Directors Institute that it's a must. So it will be front and centre in our actions. Anything else? Thanks, thanks, thanks Tanya. What, what I'm going to do now is I've got one more person who's asked to um, speak or ask questions, which is Councillor Manderson, and then we're just going to zip it and let you get through your presentation. We'll have questions at the end. So. Councillor Manderson, did you have something further you wanted to add? Thank you. Yes, I think the uh, attention to the housing industry is, is, is something that could do positively uh, that will house people, it will create employment in, in the north, uh, it will utilise otherwise wasted trees. Um, I think that's the sort of thing that should be focused on. With many of these others, uh, imagining for a moment that they're so incompetent that the rail can't work out their own future, or or the sea, or the uh, or the airlines, etc., is as a presumption of, of no foundation in my mind. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So this slide just reiterates that you can feedback through your council also online. Come back to us. Um, I'm just wondering, I'll take direction from you, Mr. Chair. So what we've done here is in the, in the condensed version, you'll see that we've broken down. And I was going to have a bit of a workshop with you around the four key areas, which is around economy, our enablers, leadership, and the fourth one was... Do you want me to, I'm just aware of time, do you actually want to have a conversation around them now or do you want me just to sow some seeds and then you come back to us? So do, do, can you just, I, I'm just having trouble picking out the four areas that yeah, sure. you're talking to. Are they on the sheet here or are they? So the four areas are, so our economy, leadership, connectivity, which we've had a really good conversation around connectivity and the enablers, which I think are quite important. Pages there. So I'll bring them up for you, Mr. Chair, so you've got them in front of you. Um, so our economy, for example, what we've done at a high level, we've identified three high level goals. So as an example of this one, by 2040, the aim is to lift average wages by 40%. And obviously there's a whole lot of stuff that needs to happen to have that. And then we've got some goals in here. And what we're really keen, which you might actually want to just think on and come back to us, is what are some key actions and your waste to energy is a really good example of that. What are some key actions that will help us raise our average? Um, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's that one. The next one is we can send leadership. Now, interesting, leadership's quite important and certainly um, feeling it and hearing it this morning. So leadership through everything we've looked at, leadership sits in there, but what's really coming to the forefront is that for us to be heard in Wellington is that we really need really strong, cohesive leadership. So we're still you know, looking after our backyards, but when we come together at a regional level, we're really clear and strong about what it is that we're asking for. So once again, subsidiarity, subsidiarity, which I'm hearing a lot of this morning, and this is about local decision making and that government only comes in as support rather than leading the way. You're probably aware that we are the third most centralised country in the Western world, whereas back in the 1940s, 50, public money used to be about 50-50 split between central and local government, yeah. and now we're about 12% local. <laughs> Central. So this is a really cool word to go and really be pushing, and you'll see it in that local government reform. So anyway, coming back to this once again in a nutshell, we really came to hear some ideas of how do we grow and build cohesive leadership. And I'm really interesting, you know, as a council, the four of you coming together and how you have that collective narrative. So we can feedback on that. We've had a really good uh, conversation around connectivity. Once again, we are after some key actions, the four-lane highway, we go um, digital connectivity. I live in Carmel and still can't get my internet to work all the time. So, you know, we need, we need some work there. And the last one, enablers. So our enablers, 
which have been identified so far as that cohesive identity, what's our branding for Northland, uh, fresh water, timely and factual data, et cetera. Once again, if you've got any thoughts over the next week or so, please send them through. Um, there's, right, so that's... I'm not just wrap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th thank you, Paul. Yeah. Th thank you very much uh, for that, Tanya. No worries. I might just think of... Thank you, Tanya. I think the advantage of having Tania with us, and obviously in all those years as a councillor with FNDC, she understands the council process. Um, I think what, from this conversation, been, for, for a start, it's been really good. Um, you're one of the more engaged and passionate groups we've dealt with, and, and that's really good. And, and I like some of the conversations that's coming through. So I like getting back to basics. Um, so the conversations we're having here about just fix the bloody housing. Sure. Um, you know, I say to you, maybe that's one of the the, um, the work streams that's in the prospectus, and then how you do that is another exercise completely because you have to get a body around that and figure out what's the solution. But it, I think that housing issue has to be in there. That that's come through strongly here more than the other councils. Um, but when I'm talking to everybody, it's an issue for the whole north. It's not specific to the Kaipara. So that's a really great important. Point. So thank you for that. Um, so in terms of um, where I see this going in terms of, you know, I, I always put the sanity hat on and go, well, what's the point of this? What are we actually going to achieve out of all this? Um, so what I would like to get to with, with the input from all the councils and community engagement and so on is you've got this document that gives people a vision of hope for the future. And that's what I call the fluffy part of it. And I'm not being derogatory, but that's, that doesn't have facts and statistics because it's future thinking. Um, there's that middle part of it. And then that's that prospectus part to the end. I think that's a critical part because Northern Inc. actually is part of your advocacy into central government. I'm down there next week for the whole week, walking around all government departments, advocating for a whole lot of things for the North. And, and as you know, um, you know, we just had eight and a half million dollars of recycling money go out. To him. We wouldn't have got that without the advocacy work that Northern Inc. did. Um, we were originally offered 1.7. Uh, we were probably going to get another two on the second tranche of it. We ended up getting eight and a half. So when we talk about the advocacy part of it, um, we are your advocates, the central government, and we, we are talking on behalf of you and the other council. So when we get this prospectus part of it, the crunchy end, and, and whatever those things are, and also encourage you in your feedback, don't just think about infrastructure. You know. There's stuff that's really important to the North that isn't infrastructure. It might be education. It, it might be, I mean, I have a personal view. I think, and it's my personal view, I think we need to rebrand the North completely. The branding of the North is, is not fit for purpose. I don't know what the solution is. But, but if you get your branding right for the North, that, that then influences the type of people you attract to your community in the North. Because you can't, you can't stop people coming into a, into a region um, by law, you can't just put up a wall or something like that. What you can do, though, is create an environment, an investment environment and a cultural environment mm -hmm. that attracts the type of people you want. Right? And, and those people might be, be young, they might be digital savvy, they, they might be semi-retired with bags of money, so they want to set up another business for their children or whatever it might be. So how you pitch a region um, is really important, and that's that branding part of it. So I, I think that has to be in the we need, we need to rebrand the North. So I'm just going to wrap up. I want to thank my team um, for bringing this to you. That This is an interactive. This is not the final solution. Um, like I said, we are hearing that net zero stuff is probably an outcome or enabler. I think there's some things we're talking about people in there. But again, I'm guiding that. We, we're setting the architecture for you, and we're letting you fill it up. And then we're trying to basically weave what does that look like that everybody gets to a landing place that we will agree with? And that, that's our, um, we're conducting the orchestra. So at times we have the trombone going boom, 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 and at other times we have the violin going doo -doo -doo -doo, and we're trying to get that, that one sound, uh, and that's a bit of a tricky navigation, but we'll get there. Um, this is a process. I'd like to thank the chair um, for inviting us. Um, I hope you can see what the process is. Um, it's, it's, we're not there yet, and that's part of this engagement. So keep firing these, these points into us. Um, use the links or, or through Michael, um, feedback to us. 
and we'll put it all into a mix and then we'll come back to you and go, what do you think of this? Because we have to get to a strategy that we all agree with and we have to get to a prospectus that we all agree with. So I, Gordon Inc and others can then advocate on your behalf to go and get these, these things happening. Mm. Thank, thanks, Paul. Yeah, so what, what I'm going to do now is um, we've got another presentation coming up and, and you may find that interesting as well if you can hang back for a little while if you have the time. Um, what I'm hoping to do is we're now at 10.48. We've still got a couple of um, comments to come here and I've written a note of a few things. So what we might do is try to wrap up by 5 to 11 and then we'll have a break and then we'll head back into our next item. So just um, if you could just bear with us while we... Wrap up if that's okay. Yep. So, Councillor Manderson and then Councillor Howard. Thank you. Um, I'd like to address what I think is the elephant in the room. Uh, this here is all on T. Re Ringer, a Taitokarau Economic Wellbeing Pathway. And I have, by studying this agenda, which I've had delivered to me in, in some days before the meeting. Uh, become thoroughly confused about what its intention is, what the outcome is, um, etc. And I sort of feel that the whole issue has got horribly contaminated by mixing po political aspirations of a minority with the um, financial responsibility, as many would see their roles in looking at the situation from North and Inc. And I think that um, the promotion of a near Stone Age culture strikes me as being a, a ridiculous ambition to have in this day and age, and it will be counterproductive. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Manderson. Councillor Howard. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through to Paul and, and, and to your team, you know, thank you for this. I mean, it, it, obviously, this is, well, it's more than embryonic, but it's, it, 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 it's starting to formulate, you know, good direction. I, I, and ultimately, and I believe that ultimately, you know, very good direction will come out. And it's just very pleasing to know that there is some sense of really commit a real commitment to making Northland and whatever new branding it might be uh, a much better place. Uh, I'm though wondering, given what you've heard from us today, are you hearing enough from Kaipra? You know, um, uh, have you been hearing different, uh, well, not different things, but um, maybe not in the, in the volumes, the, the key points, maybe you haven't been hearing the key points that we're making uh, in the right volumes. So just briefly, we have heard you and we've taken lots of notes, but we would like to hear, as Paul said at the start, if you could give us your three top high-level actions that you would like to see happen, <laughs> noting that the four lane don't need to mention that because we've got that, or for what they would look like, that would be great. Thanks for that. And, and uh, sorry, we, we, we might be holding you, but we just got a, a level of enthusiasm that won't die down. So, uh, Councillor Lambeth wants to speak again. And you've hit on it. I don't want to see 10, 20 different things. Oh, we achieved seven out of the 20. Nah, how about all the rubbish? Let's get to the important three. And, you know, and, and if you don't achieve those three, then you go back and try and do it. You go back. At four laning, yeah, you know that, yeah. So we're on to it. The housing is obviously another one that's going to be either one, two, or one A, or whatever. Um, yeah. Thank, thanks, Thank Councillor Lambeth. I, I, I um, ha have made a few notes myself to allow um, the floor to speak. And I just wonder if you want to not be in the gallery and come back up here, Tanya or Paul, you're you're welcome to come back into the presenter's position if you want to, or um, if you want to stay there, I can just speak to you from here. Um, and, and, and I'm still going to try and wrap up very, very soon. And these might be things that you just note down and come back to us with. Um, you, t you alluded to uh, green energy initiatives and how there was, um, there was some merit behind these. 
and what I would like to understand around that, is there some merit behind them because they are somehow getting government subsidies to establishment, establish them? And, and in fact, do they stack up in their own merit or are they subsidised? Because I know that central government still has a very strong drive with its national emissions reduction plan and it would be very interesting to understand what the maths is behind them being um, worthwhile. On the four laning, I mean, whether you call it four laning or you call it having a decent road between Auckland and Northland, I don't care, <laughs> or a motorway for that matter. This is a conversation that the Mayor and I are having with um, our uh, liaison in the NZTA, Steve Mutton. And I've made it very clear that we don't care about toll roads. Toll every section. Make it happen. Just get on with it. They've already done all the procurement from Walkworth through to Tihana. Burn some earth, get on with it, put a toll on that section and do the procurement from Tihana to Whangarei and toll that too. We will pay for three tolls, just do it. But we need it to happen now, not in 30 years time. And I think that the point that was made here was very, uh, very apt. There's an election in just over 100 days. I think we should be rolling out a, a social media campaign sponsored by all of the Northern Councils going, we need four laning to Whangarei. Vote for the parties that support this. Put some political pressure on. Well, we've got a chance. It's very easy to do. All sorts of other sector groups are doing it. Groundswell are doing it. All the political parties are waiting in. Let's chuck our own campaign up. You sponsor the ads for virtually nothing. Push it into all of Northland and put some political pressure on. I think that we need to actually get on with it and seriously consider doing something like that if there is support. And if we can be sufficiently unclunky enough to actually get on and have a go at it. That's just an idea. I'm just raising it. I haven't discussed it with anybody else, but it emerged during that conversation. Now, we had a meeting um, earlier, when was it, last, last week, with some of these amazing brethren businessmen. In Two days Monday. Was it? Supplies. <laughs> they. <laughs> They know what they're doing. Now, from our perspective, you know, we're looking at an economic development facilitator and we're going like we're going to get someone on the staff that's going to go out and promote the district and go to Auckland, come and set up here. Well, the thing that arose for me talking to these gentlemen the other day is actually maybe we go to them and say, can you tell us what we should do? They have an incredibly successful business model. It's modular. They roll it out all over the place, employ lots of people. And their biggest problem over there is housing employees. As Councillor Lambeth has alluded, <laughs> I think that as one of our key stakeholder groups, maybe don't call them the brethren businesses, I don't know, but that's what I know them as. They are all linked together through their unity, through their church, and man, do they know how to run a business. So there are a few points to raise with you, and I just want to come back to your one pager, which is your this, this document here. And what I would say to you from a communication perspective, and let's take ancestry out of it, the fact of the matter is that 96 of the population can't read Maori. We would like, we would like to be able to. I certainly would like to be able to. It would, it would help me. But it is not an easy road learning languages, as we know. So if we want a document that's readable, and you're going to put Maori language before English, which almost all people can read the English, and almost nobody can read the Maori, you're making your document unreadable. I suspect it needs to stay in there. I would put it second or put it in brackets or something like that. There will be a good sector of the Northern Councils that will certainly want it there. Putting it first just makes it unreadable, especially when you're reading down a margin and it's cutted out. And the other thing I would point out to you here is in your intergenerational outcomes, you have the point addressing teeterity obligations. I don't know what you mean by that. 
And I don't know whether you can answer us now. I would like to come back. What do you mean by that? Certainly, we aren't a party to the treaty. We do have some obligations in terms of treaty clauses in specific legislation, but it's very, very clearly prescribed. So, uh, and isn't really oftentimes that much different to our obligations to the rest of the community. So I'd like an answer on that, and I think we've run out of time in that regard. And the second point there is under your our way column, you have fair and just, and then in, in brackets, futurity principles. So I would like to understand specifically what you mean by that, in that futurity principles aren't defined in law other than in the lands case. Um, what are we meaning to our community when we go out with something that would be really great if you could clarify those two points. Um, so I won't go on any more at this stage, but I'd really like to thank you for coming up and taking the time to have this conversation with us at the early part of this process. Very difficult to accommodate diverse views, and I, I think you've probably found our council to be uh, reasonably strident in saying what they think. I hope they've got their message across. Um, not confused. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Diversity of views and making something stick, but uh, I think it's been a really useful conversation and to get you know, get to know you a little bit better and um, I hope for you to get to know us a little bit better as well. So let's keep this conversation going and I'm excited about our initiative for our district as well being embedded in, in what you're Doing too. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Councillors. Um, I love these conversations, and it, it's, it's it's good that everybody feels free and frank, um, and we can take that back and feed into the process. So, thank you, Chair. Thanks very much. Thank you. Guys. Okay. All right. We'll have a cup of tea break for five minutes or so, and then we'll get into our next presentation.
Next speaker is Mr. Mike Lightfoot. And um, Mike, if you could introduce yourself first by giving us just a brief um, introduction about your background and what you currently do, and then give us your presentation of um, the chair in my uh, in my presentation that tells us a little bit about my background. I'm just going to quickly touch base on I was born in Raglan, lovely oh. places. So uh, very proud sort of Waikato boy. I moved to Rotorua and grew up in Rotorua. Um, I did a trade as upholstery, and um, and I became a radio announcer for many years. So I worked for Radio Hauraki and 890 FM, KCC FM, and Whangarei many years ago. Um, and uh, and from there I ended up uh, actually moving into selling radio because nobody wanted to sell airtime. You had nothing to sell, and I absolutely loved it, thrived on it. And from there, it, it, my career took off in this sales and marketing side. So, um, what I want to talk to you today is about strategy, and I think it's a really good segue into what the North and Inc team have presented. So, I'll just go into a little bit more detail. Why is this not changing slide? We might need uh, it's operating off the other computer, is it? Not this one? It might be. No, it was working earlier, but I'm not sure what it is. I'm a help. Ah, oh, there. Okay, thanks. So, um, I've been a CEO of two of New Zealand's highest tech um, companies. I set up offices all over the world. Um, one of those companies was Buckley Systems. Some of you may be aware of that company. Um, so it's nuclear physics. 93% of the world's silicon chips are implanted on a Buckley magnet. Um, we then moved the company into the medical sectors and particle accelerators, and we built particle accelerators for the US government, the Taiwanese government, and the Australian government. Um, and then from a medical sector point of view, we built products for the likes of Hitachi out of Japan which supplies through to the Mayo Clinics for focal therapy treatment around cancer. Um, two years ago, I was involved as the CEO of a company called Nexus Logistics, which is New Zealand's second biggest 4PL. Um, I was phoned by one of the directors of the Ports of Auckland board, and the Ports of Auckland was in trouble. I'm sure you all read a lot and heard a lot about what happened with the Ports of Auckland. They'd had two fatalities. And I was asked to come in as a chief operations officer, which is a new role that was created and um, restructure the business. So I fully restructured the port over the last 18 months, mm -hmm. all the ships back on time. Um, when I started, the union hated the company, like you wouldn't believe, completely shifted the culture back to where um, I managed to sign a two year agreement with the union, which had never happened in the history of the port before. Led Fortune 500 companies in New Zealand uh, and was a director of FICO, which was Ford Investment Enterprise Corporation out of the US. So I represented the board here in New Zealand. Um, I've, I have won multiple business awards the New Zealand um, Trade and Enterprise International Innovation Award, the Supreme Award, Best of the Best for Business, and two New Zealand Export of the Year awards. And I've also sat on multiple boards over the year. Um, I hold my directorship and currently sit on the Auckland Chamber of Commerce board and just recently have been appointed a board member for Northland Inc. And I'm really excited about that opportunity and looking forward to working um, you know, with, with you as well. So as a CEO, every, every company I took over, they never had strategy or strategic plans in place. And I became really frustrated. You know, when I came into a business, there was no strategy. When I asked about strategy, basically what they were doing was putting the key in the door and they were working every single day. And for me, leading a business, there was no accountability. So accountability is key if we're going to hit the goals that we want to achieve. So I wanted to do something different. I didn't want things on paper. When you have a paper document, it just, there's no accountability behind a paper document. So I searched for something different and I found a product called LeaderKit. It's an online software and it was designed by a Kiwi, former CEO, who was extremely frustrated with documents and wanted to, to, to develop something himself. So we started achieving our goals and we started achieving our goals on time, every time. Every business that I moved on to and the CEO for, we achieved our goals. In fact, we grew 40% year on year in the businesses that I led. So I'm like the old Remington story. Some of you that are old enough will remember the Remington story, right? I love the company so much I bought the software. 
So I ended up, I have two business partners out of Australia that are two entrepreneurs, and uh, I approached the chap in New Zealand. He also has developed another software called Board Pro that's very well known in New Zealand, Board Software. And, um, and we, we ended up purchasing the company off him. We fully redeveloped and simplified it. Um, as, a, as a CE running some high tech businesses, I wanted to understand how this would, how we could do it a little bit better. But what we needed to do was drive execution and accountability. And that's what the software does. So why do we need strategy? If we always do what you've always done, you always get what you've already got, right? Famous saying by Henry Ford. And I love it, it's, it's so true. So developing a strategy, you know, I, I don't want to teach anybody here how to suck eggs, but I want to go back to the basics of how important this is, right? Our purpose, why are we even here? You know, our vision, what do we want to become? Our mission, how do we get there? Those two, the vision and mission, regularly get mixed up, regularly get mixed up. And the reason I say that is people don't understand the difference. If I go back to military terms, the vision is the military arrive and they want to go up over the, you know, they're going to take the hill over, they're going to take the land over, all that sort of stuff. That's their vision. The mission is, how do they do it? Right? And then, of course, the values. Values are crucially important. And it's interesting, I can read four values that if all of you would say they're great values. Great values. And they belong to a company called Enron, and they're all behind bars now. So the importance of the values <laughs> is if we don't stick to our values, if we don't stick to our values, we get in trouble. So if the strategy doesn't fit within what our values say, we don't do it. Yeah. We come up with our, our annual strategy, which is uh, you know four to five key points. In your case, I'm listening to you today, you're talking three points for this particular committee. Uh, and then from there, we have our pillars. You, you would have seen that they, they call them themes and they have all the different uh, themes there. That's exactly what, what the pillars are. And underneath that, we develop the goals. The goals link back to the annual strategy. So if you've got three key points, when you look at the first one, it'll have multiple goals to achieve that one point. And they sit under pillars, and those pillars or themes will be different. It's the backbone key of the business. When you're developing and thinking about your goals, you will find some actions that you want to do along the way. We don't want to discard them. We take the actions, we document them and say, we're going to do that along the way. <laughs> so there it is laid out on a page, the purpose right through to the annual strategy, linking back to the goals, but we capture those key actions as well. So at the top, we've got a strategy. The crucial two things in strategy is execution and accountability. And without those two things, we will not achieve the goals that have been set. So to be successful in business, we need a strategic plan that drives the accountability. It starts with the desired annual strategy. And in some cases, you know, generally they're annual, but different businesses do things differently. So they could be six monthly, they could be quarterly targets. It's normally five to six, it could be less, three, you know, what you were talking about today. Then, as I said, we create the pillars, the backbones, and they could be things like, you know, people, safety, well-being, sustainable growth, financial, sales and marketing, tech sectors, whatever you want to call them, whatever those goals fit under, and we, we can name them in the software. Um, we then take the strategy and we work out what, what we need to do to achieve them, and that's what we call the goals. And the goals sit under the pillars as I've talked about. But the crucial part now where we start to drill into it is every single goal has an owner. Somebody owns it. That is the person that is responsible to make sure that we achieve the goal. This is where we start driving the accountability. Each goal is assigned, we then set the date, right? And the date is another crucial part. We don't go moving dates. If we don't hit it, we're not, we're not gonna hit it. The minute we start moving dates, the whole point of the strategic plan is gone. We need that accountability, we need to have a date, and we, and we drive to, to achieve it by, by that time. When we get a team of people together like the executive or whoever's driving us, they become stakeholders. So we select the stakeholders that are important to each goal. So if, if I'm an owner and I have two or three of you as stakeholders, if I start going, geez, I'm not going to achieve this, I can come to you as a stakeholder and say, I need your help. Can you do this? Can you do that? Can you support me to achieve this? 
one of the one of the great things about the software is it's visual, right? Very easy to see. Are we on track? Are we off track? Are we are we in trouble? So it's a very simple red, amber, green that shows alongside each goal and each owner and how they're performing. These all align back to the annual strategy, and I'll show you that in the software. Each owner must comment every single time they do something within the goal. So every time they do anything at all, we capture the comments. And again, this is the accountability to make sure that they are doing what they say they're going to do. Otherwise, we're not going to hit the goals that we've set within the time that we do. One of the great things about it is if, no, if nobody, or sorry, if, if someone hasn't done anything on a goal, there's no comments made within a month of that goal, the software sends them an email. And it says, hey, listen, you've, it, it's pretty polite, actually. It says, listen, you've done no work on this for a month. I mean, time you took a look at it, and then it says, keep up the great work. So it encourages them to get back in there and get involved. Most businesses today don't have a robust strategic plan, and they certainly don't drive the accountability behind it. To achieve the goals, we need to set our business, drive the execution and the accountability. And the crucial part is regular meetings with the team. Together, you know, online, the business strategy will get results. Business online is a visual and it's a live document. It's not a paper document that's sitting somewhere that someone has to pass around to get comments on what they've done or go and ask all the people. Everybody's working on the software the same. It's all captured in one place. And that, that's the beauty of it. There's no, have, no point in having a strategic plan that never gets reviewed. And mark my words, that is very common today. Almost all strategic plans are written on paper. And many are simply put in the drawer. You know, businesses that I've that I've taken over as a CE, I've walked in, asked to see the strategic plan. Firstly, as I said earlier, they don't have them. The couple of businesses that did, the owner turned around and he goes like this, and he pulls it out of the drawer and he hands me a document. So I'd say to him, When's the last time you've looked at that? Oh, when we wrote it. So I said, How do you drive accountability of all those goals that you want to achieve? They have no idea because it's sitting in the drawer. <laughs> Every single one of us has strategy in our lives, in our personal lives, right? We set goals for ourselves. We've saved up, we've bought cars, we save up for holidays, boats, motorbikes, might be a, a trip overseas. And we set, out, set ourselves goals and we hold ourselves accountable to achieve them. And we do that. And the better we become at setting the goals, exceeding them, the better we become holding ourselves accountable and the easier the strategy becomes. So think about strategy as a path across time. You, know, you choose the goal, you execute, execute it, and complete it within the time frame. And we do that every single day ourselves. Business is no different. This is exactly the same. We set our goals, we execute, drive the accountability to achieve them in the time frame that we've all agreed to do it. It's all about focus and exceeding the goals that, that have been set and, and agreed. It's all very well having a strategic plan and you know, execution is key. So leader kit will drive the strategy. Leader kit will hold the team accountable. Leader kit will help drill down and understand the direction better of where the business is going. And leader kit will drive the economic development in a strategic direction. We don't want the staff having their heads in the sand. Right? We don't want to be that business. That's not how we want to be. We want to stand out from the crowd. We want to be the green, the, the red apple amongst the green. We want to be something different. We want to be facing the other way. We want to be that different person that's showing that we are different and we're doing things right. And we certainly want to be the purple cow that stands out from the crowd. So to finish, you know, success is about execution. If you can't execute, you'll never be better than what we are today. Live by your business strategy, drive accountability, and challenge yourself and the team regularly. Monthly meetings are a must. You know, strategy must be talked about in a monthly meeting. And, and I'll show you in the software how we do that. It's very visual. But to keep the business strategy on track, check what feedback has been recorded and execute the plan. Imagine some friends are shooting hoops, just having fun 
you know, in, in the backyard. What do you think would happen if we started taking score? All of a sudden, right, it becomes extremely competitive and everybody wants to succeed. It's exactly the same. It's the same scenario. Having, having something like this, driving strategy of growth, everybody will want to be a part of it and it will shift the culture. Your business will thrive in a well-designed, well-executed strategy. It drives culture, as I said. It brings together the team. They become very, very motivated. And together, everybody will achieve more as a team. And Leadercat will drive the strategic plan. I thrive on this stuff, something that I'm very passionate about. And I'm here to support however I can. <laughs> I, love this, I love, you know, a motor car is an amazing piece of technology. And when we sit in a motor car, right, where we are is now. When we look in that rear view mirror, we can't change it. It's behind us, it's the past. There's nothing we can do about it. We learn from things, but there's nothing that we can change. But what we can do is we, we can steer our future. We decide where our future's going to go. We're in control. It's the future. It's how we lead it. So what I thought I'd do now is just take a quick look at the software to get, show you um, how it works. I'm, I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on it because, you know, it can be quite detailed. But we'll just play out. Just in terms of time frame, uh, Mike, we've got um, half an hour, including questions. So you've got plenty of time to. Oh, OK, cool. To, um, if, if you need it. Sorry, because I'm an administrator, I see everybody's. <laughs> I'm just going to go into a big site. So the first thing I'd like to show you is when we when we create uh, a strategy, we invite people that are going to be the owners of the of the goals, and they show here on the on this page. So where we start to drive the accountability is you'll see where it says they're logged in. So we can see the last time that person is logged in to do some work within the strategy. We're not seeing that on the screen. Not oh. Alana. Okay, hang on. I will try this then. All right. Help me, Lana. Help, help me, Lana. That one. I want to put it down here. Oh, you get up, Doug's head. Oh, double, yeah. I double clicked on let's take a look and it came up on my computer. I haven't got that. I've got to stop sharing that one and share this one. Um, have we got. What happens if you double click on let's take a look? That's what you did. Didn't work. How do we get to stop it? Not a sales pitch. I'm not buying this. Maybe yeah. No okay. one said we were. Yeah. Oh, it looks like it's a nail thing. In your bad direction. All right, there we go. Let's just it. On for of interest. Sorry? On for the yeah. so, Me? No, not for anyone. <laughs> Sorry about that. Technical glitch. <laughs> so what I've done here, sorry, is, is this is this is the page where we log into the software. I, I jumped over a screen. Um, where we invite the, the owners of the um, of the goals. And you'll see some names there. This is, as I said, this is a test site. But where, where it's logged in, you can see that that's the last time that the person has logged in. So really, really driving the accountability. Um, let's go back into the software. So when I go into the software, there is, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into this today, but there's areas where your three year plan gets put in. You can do a SWOT analysis on the, on the, um, the, the um, you can look at business drivers, so the market, the foundation, the leadership, the structure, the processes that are in place, um, you know, tangible, intangible. And then if I go in, into the, into the drill down, so I went into the market, um, you know, who, who are the competitors that we're competing against? What is the target? What's our product, our marketing? What are our market forces? Anything that could affect us achieving our goals are all captured in the software. If I now go into the roadmap, so this is where we get to the strategy on a page. So up here we have our purpose, we put our vision and our mission. 
we add our long term goals all on the front page, and then we come down to our annual strategy. So this, in this particular um, test case here, I think we've got uh, five or six cases in here. And on the, on the left hand side, the goals. So if, if you have a look on the right hand side, it's a annual strategy. The first one will say achieve a 12% new business growth year on year. How do we achieve that? What do we have to do? So that's where we start drilling down in, into that to figure out all of the things that we need to do. And we create the pillars of the themes, as I said. So if you see here, it's got customer, business process, people. These are our pillars. We can change these to whatever any business requires. So, you know, for the for, for, for KDC or if it's involved in you know an environment level or whatever the case may be, sustainable growth, you know, we can we can change those. They're all changeable very easily. So what we do is we develop the, the annual um, points that we want to achieve as we it, then we start developing the goals. So if I, I I actually just wrote one up last night. So if I add one and say right, you know, target the tech sector for the Kuiper district, for example. Click on that. That's right. That's what I add the goal. I say right. What does that mean? And we capture the reference here. Research and gain an understanding of what tech business would be would best suit you know development within our region. Whatever the, whatever. I'm just making this stuff up right, just to show you how the software works. Then what we do is we go down a bit further, and we say who's the owner of this goal. We give give that a name. Jones, the owner of this goal. And you'll see, as I showed right up front, where we've added the people, there they all sit there underneath, right? Who are the stakeholders that are going to support us to achieve this particular goal? We took their names, come down a bit further. What pillar does it sit under? Okay, where does it sit? So we say, right, it sits under the tech sector. It's the pillar that we've decided. When do we want it complete by? I'll say June 2024, and we want to monitor it currently because it's it's uh, it's a new goal. Is it a priority goal? Yes or no. So what that does on the front page, it'll make the goal bold or not bold. And then as we go, we can add milestones here. So we might say as we're setting a goal. By this quarter, we want this done. By the next quarter, we want that done. By the next quarter, we want that done. We add that all into the goal. Save and close it. <laughs> and if I drop down, you'll now see there's a pillar there that says tech sector, and there it is six under the tech sector. It's owned by JH, and it's a status of orange, which means we need to monitor it. So when JH takes this goal on and starts doing some work in here, what they do is they click in here and they add comments of everything they've done. So they would say, um, met with KDC today. Oops. And add that comment. You will see that that now adds that comment. It tells by me the date and time. So this is where it drives accountability of all the work done underneath the goal. Nobody can delete that comment except the author. So they can't go and you know someone can't go and go. Oh, I delete that. Yeah. <laughs> delete it. Save it. And that's that's in there. You'll see here that the, the drive culture capability and accountability, you'll see these numbers here, three, four, five, seven, nine, that relates back to the goals. And I'm gonna show you how that works. So as we've developed these and we've now written all of our goals that sit under our pillars, we now need to link them back to the goals. So this one here I've unticked to show you how we do that. So if I click on this, this um, goal here, as I drop down the page, you will see all of, all of the goals here that we've developed. So if I say, 
Right, eh? We've now written all the goals and it says up here, achieve the 12% new business growth year on year. Let's just go back and have a look at the goals that we, we talked about. We want to develop a value proposition. We want to lift our customer service. We want to standardize our current product range. We want to pioneer new innovative products. We want to simplify our product range. And, and these goals can be anything. I, I'm just, you know, just using this as an example, showing you how they link. Go down a bit further. And we say we definitely want to achieve our total sales revenue. We want to, uh, five new customers and new business within the beef sector. And up here I go save. And you will now see there all of these goals are now aligned with that overall strategy. Any questions so far? Everybody understanding it? Now, down the bottom of the page, I talked about capturing key actions. So as we're developing the strategy, anything that we, we come across that's a key action, we can add them in here rather than as a goal. So again, we give it a priority. Who's the owner? What is the deadline? It's a sliding scale. So they monitor themselves along here and say, I'm 50% through, 60% through, 70% through. And that's how that works. Now, where the best part of, of the software comes is when we do a review. So our monthly meetings, we want to understand how we're performing. Are we on track to achieve the goals that we said we're going to? We get a review. So if I go to a board review, it now brings up every goal, every person, comments that are made underneath them. So you have a look down and you go, the oranges are something we need to talk about. The greens are on track. We don't even need to worry about it. All right, we go down the page and we go, oh, there's a red one here. What's happening? So this is something that we need to discuss. So we'll have a discussion around that. We might decide at the meeting that something needs to happen here. We simply click on this and we add the comment in the meeting. Oops. Touch the keyboard. Add, add the comment and that's now added into that goal and it's in the goal in the background as well to say this we've ex we've done this and we expect this to be done by the by this time it's an action if i want to go up here this is just showing the latest i can show all of the comments so you can get a real in-depth on what that person has done on each goal michael you know oh, sorry can we ask questions as we go you go ahead council and um we have a um a staff member who's got a key role in one of these leaves. Somebody else takes their place. Can you swap the roles? Eh? Yeah, very easy. Okay. So all we do is add another person and invite them to the software. We delete the current person and we change the owner of the goal to the new person. And that new person coming on board then can go through and accurately see where they are at and things. Correct. Yeah. So the idea is that's the whole point of, of the comments is this is where the accountability really comes into to driving um, you know your strategy and your goals that you want to achieve is the comments are added all the way through at, at, at meet, you've got a record of it they're reviewed at the meetings and the meetings are crucial to make sure they're reviewed so that usual staff rotation where it becomes a dead duck and then the project it would eliminate that uh, or or stop that from happening a lot? Well, the, but yes, the idea is that everything's captured and that person, yes, they've got to come up to speed, but they should be able to come up to speed relatively quickly on what's happened or what's been happening, who's been met, who's been met with, you know, anything that, that's happened around that, that goal. Um, Fly-by-nighters and talkers have really got no place with this, have they? They're going to have to put pen to paper in. What you'll find is, and this is, look, this is one thing I found um, really was, when I went into a business and there was no strategy, we had a whole lot of people that were bloody hard workers and a whole lot of people that were slackers. Guess who left the business? <laughs> hard workers, right? Because they get frustrated that Joe Bloggs over here is doing nothing. The minute we took this on board and started driving accountability, they got into it. Then guess who leaves? 
the slackers because the there's, 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 no, there's no room for them anymore. No way to hide. Yeah. Shift your culture to like a high five. We're doing this, you know, and you really shift your business significantly. It drives a very different culture. People like people thrive on accountability. Believe it or not, they thrive on it. And when they're all sitting in a team together and you're saying, hey, well done, or what support, what support counsellor do you need to get this over the line? You know, all of a sudden people feel like they're a team. They're supporting each other. They understand that there's, there's goals on the boat, rowing the boat in the same direction. And really, um, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great feeling to be a part of a team that's achieving goals that we want to achieve because we've got accountability, we're executing and we're holding people accountable and behind it. Just had a quick panic attack there. I thought you were sort of talking about for staff, not for councillors. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you were um, developing, say, a $100 million construction project, would you specifically use that in that role outside the other parameters of the company or would it still be included in? No, you can, you can, I mean, so for example, you know, when we went to the port, we took this, we, we took the software down, when I went to the port, the software went down levels, right? So it, there might be one that sits right at, at, a, at a high level, CEO type level, and then, it, and then it might be an operation one that goes down and you end up where you pull everything together, rowing the whole boat in the same direction. So if I, you know, if I get tasked by the board with a whole lot of, um, you know, strategic plan goals, I feed it out to my team. What they then own, they feed out to their team, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and down it goes. So you end up with, with the whole organisation driving driving. But particularly, you know, when you're looking at, at growth, um, you know, and a growth strategy, um, you know, I mean, now that I'm a director on Northern Inc., I love, I love what, I listened today. It was really interesting listening to what you said to them and, and, and listening to what they've put together and watching what they've put together. But, you know, when I picked up the, the document, everything on that document could be in here. If you ever look at it, they talk about themes, that's pillars. Yep. Right? So all of that information, and Paul's actually said to me, I'd really like to see this. But, you know, the, the, it's sim it, it simplifies everything. It's very visual but holds accountability to make sure what we say we're going to do, we do. And I think that, you know, that, that is the part for me that, you know, I mean, as I said, I, I love strategy, I thrive in it, I love, you know, helping companies build it, um, you know, and that's, that's basically what I do now. I work with organisations to build strategy. Um, I don't come up with the ideas, it's their strategy, but I help them facilitate and put it together. To the point where you know we've got something that that the, the organisation is driving and, and leading. Yeah, Councillor Howard, go ahead. Thanks, Chair. Um, Mike, it's great because, uh, from my experience, there's one key word: dynamic. They're absolutely dynamic and integrates, involves everyone, and so everyone can see it in one place. Whereas, you know, the paper, the experience with paper. Some people don't do it, don't have it, you know, there's no consistency. So uh, dynamic is, is my big outtake. Councillor, anyone else got any questions or comments or? Um... I have a small question. Go ahead. Uh, I worked in, worked in various organisations um, overseas and here. Um, so all corporate organisations have a either customer relationship management software or RMS. And I'm just wondering if our council has something whereby you can monitor what's going on with something. So say, for example, and in just relation, maybe I'm putting two together to see the relevance of it. So I put a complaint to you and, and then you put it in the system somewhere and then you assign it to someone. So what kind of software you have there? Okay. So, um, Thanks, Councillor Nat. That's a very specific question. <laughs> Specifically, oh, I'll give you an answer. Oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not putting on all I'm trying to say, um, because we are a rate payers driven organization. Yeah. So we have to value what we are getting into, uh, what value we're getting into, because it's a very business focused um, leader kit. It's, it's, it's very strategy focused. Yeah. 
So, I mean, for the governors, the 10 of us, maybe it's useful where the mayor can say, hey, Ash, what did you do with this? But in terms of an organization which is driven by ratepayers and every dollar we spent has to be justified and there has to be output or input from the community towards us as well. Um, so, I would say any system which takes care of all those elements, as long as um, the CE is able to see what's going on. Can I, can I just chip in to give you a little bit of context, if you don't mind, um, Councillor Nayer? So, what we had this morning was the adoption of a framework to develop a strategy for the economic development of our district. Okay, and so in that context. Why I have asked Mike to come and present to us today is that we are, as a council, going to be developing a strategy. And all Mike is showing us today is here is a platform and a framework within which a strategy can be developed. That's as far as the conversation is going. There's that's all right. I'm just wondering. So, so, so I just want to explain that to you that that's all the conversation we're having today is here is an example of how a platform can be used to develop a strategy. I'm happy for you to direct a specific question to the chief executive, and he's happy to answer it in terms about how we manage customer interactions at the moment and what system we're using. And I'll hand over to him now. Thank you. No, no, just in the, just replying to the context uh, in, in the context itself is that. Um, the strategy present is all about execution and any system which can provide execution uh, i would appreciate strategy is one part but execution is the key element of so yes yeah. okay for you mr chair so 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 what i'll do is i'll talk about the, the first question you asked which is about the customers and all that sort of stuff and, and that's through our service request system so there is a, a system in place that tracks and takes accountability the requests that come in from the public for you guys, uh, because you're a, you're a special audience, obviously, uh, and, a, and a key stakeholder for us, we've got a different system set up with you where you go through Linda. It's a little bit more manual, but the volume of is such that it can be managed that way. Quite a different picture to what to what Mike's presenting to you today. Okay, now when you when you look at council and the business of council, we are uh, we are required to be, as you know, planned to within into our lives uh, to some degree. So you know, you think about the long term plan is the ten year strategic document for delivery to our ratepayers. Then you think about the annual plan about what you're going to deliver in that year, um, and then the annual report, which is backwards facing, which reports on the progress around that. Okay. Now in that long term plan, so I'm just giving you a high level picture of how we set up, right? In that long-term plan, you have measures that you've set that we report on and, re and report to, and that's audited by our auditors um, through, the, through the annual report process. So there is a, a significant local government process set up okay. in place already, okay? For all the councils, right? Yeah, yeah, for the same. And, 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 and behind that, what you don't see is what we do internally with our staff, right? Uh, so we have a, a business plan for each activity business unit for all of our staff uh, done every year based on an annual plan that you adopt and then that filters into individual objectives for our staff which are reviewed monthly with the managers okay so that's the stuff that goes on behind the scenes that you don't get involved with because of governance but that's what we do right what what my is my wife is talking about here is slightly even different to that so he's talking about you know if you've got a strategy in place how can you get oversight for a specific strategy, I think? That's where this one takes from it. Yeah, but I mean, what, just, just one of the things you talked about, you've got your annual plan, right? So your annual plan could sit in here with the accountability in, in behind that. If you've got, I mean, with your annual plan, I, I, I haven't seen it, but at the end of the day, if you've got people that are owning particular parts for you to achieve something within the annual plan, you can definitely put it in here to drive it. Um, this is not a financial package. That's not what it's designed for. Um, you, you know, you're talking about a CRM, you know, customer relationship management tool. Uh, this is designed purely as strategy document, but it works very similar to a CRM. But what what we've tried to do, like when we purchased the software, there were some complicities in there that we wanted to take out. So we wanted to keep it very simple, very visual. Um, very easy to manoeuvre around and shift to whatever your business model is. Um, from a theme point of view, 
all of the names can be changed in, in the software, and it's very simple to do. Um, but 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 what it's what is it what it's about doing is driving or executing the strategy, the accountability to achieve it on time. Thank you. Um, you go ahead, uh, Councillor Lambert. Mike, um, you spoke before about achievers getting frustrated. Um, and, and leaving company and, and, and then bringing this in for the underachievers, they end up leaving because the pressure has been put on them. What about, and you would come into some organisation where there are really good achievers, but they're not very good in recording what they're doing. Is there any sort of protection that you've got for them? Because those hidden gems always are in businesses who are the best bone and keeping them. It's a really good point. And, and, and I've actually experienced that, right? Where, I mean, I'll give you one example. This, this is quite a funny story. I had a young guy that worked for me that was an amazing achiever. And the hours he put in was incredible, right? But he was a poor time manager. He had a young wife, absolutely gorgeous, right? She's pregnant, due to have a baby. So I said to him, I need to send you on a time management course because you need to get stuff together. Guess what he did on the day of his time management course? He cancelled it because he didn't have time to go. But, but you know, so what we did, yeah. what we did with that particular guy was I had um, my PA would capture his notes off him, oh. and we she ended up entering it to the point where we got him to the to, to attend the time management course and prioritise his life and his day. To, to all of a sudden, where he has time to start taking over himself. But we supported him to the point to get in there because we didn't want to lose him out of the business. I achieve that. Yeah, because they, they sort of people would be careful of this war, wouldn't they? Absolutely. And, and yeah. they're, they're your main troopers. And you work with them. And mark my words, once they start to understand how easy it is, they jump on board with it pretty quickly. But it's, it's you know, if you've got someone like that that just doesn't have time or is not tech savvy, you need to, you need to support them through that. Uh, just one other thing I wanted to say, it's hosted by Amazon Web Services. Um, so we moved it out of New Zealand to Amazon because of the security. New Zealand seems to get hit <laughs> fairly often. So uh, we wanted something with very high security to protect our data. Okay. Thank, thanks, Mike. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's an interesting point that you raise, um, Ash, um, Councillor Nayer, is, is in terms of looking at our, our strategy Overall, I mean, I'm talking about our economic development strategy. Obviously, that's a subset of the overall organisational strategy that goes up as far as our 10 year strategy and our long term plan. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it's a really uh, good conversation, which is really probably part of our uh, conversation we're going to have going forward into our long term plan. Um, reviewers get uh, runs on the board with our long-term plan and how do we know we're actually achieving what we want to achieve and so that's a you know, good, good starter I think for that conversation going forward so yes thank you very much for coming and probably thank you they um, might really appreciate that and um, I think it's uh, been, been a good um, insight for us thanks for your time thank you very much so we're one minute early as well folks <laughs> lunch <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much, everybody, for coming today and to uh, all the staff behind the scenes supporting us. I think we've had a good day today, and um, um, we look forward to uh, going ahead with our economic development strategy now that we've got that locked in. And, um, and our chief executive will keep us informed and we'll set some time frames around how we're going to make it happen and uh, take it forward from there. I'll uh, declare the briefing closed. Thank you.